Let's go outside today. I invite you for a walk. Let's breathe some fresh air, listen to the birds, and get them leaves and plants. And here is the result of my little plant gathering expedition. The plants can be totally fresh, they do not need to be dried or pressed, but I left them overnight under the book between two sheets of paper so that they do not curl. Here are all the materials ready for printing on a gel plate. So we have the paper, we have the gel plate, and we have kitchen towel to clean the brayer. I am starting with a generous layer of black acrylic paint. This layer needs to be generous, a little bit thicker, because it will take time to create patterns with our plants, and I don't want the paint to dry. So that's why the layer is thicker than usual. So what will I be creating? I will be creating background papers for a project I have in mind. I will show you the project later in another video. But today let's work on background papers and I want the botanical papers. The papers to have plants on them to evoke a feeling of forest. So that's why I went outside, that's why I got the plants and that's why I'm making plant background papers. I'm placing my plants without any rhyme and reason on the gel plate. There is no top, there is no bottom, there is not left side or right side. It just needs to be like a patterned paper. So wherever there is a free space, I'm putting a plant there. I'm sometimes until you see me turning the plant, I want to see which side has more texture, but I've noticed that it really doesn't make uh, any difference. The plants print very well on both sides. Even if there are no very distinct veins on one of the sides of the leaves, it still will make a good print. And I'm just trying to combine different sizes and shapes of plants on the same plate. Um, now I'm putting a sheet of kitchen paper on top. I've decided to use a kitchen paper, not an ordinary paper, which I would normally use, because I figured that the plants are quite um, thick, and to get with the paper in between the little parts of the plants, and to soak up the paint from the gel plate, I need a softer paper, paper that is more uh, pliable, which listens more to my hands, and I'm trying with my palms and with my fingers to go in between the parts of the plants to lift up the black paint from the gel plate. Wow! <laughs> That's already the first exciting part. And if you can notice, there's an added bonus. The kitchen paper, it is a little bit structured. There are little dots, and so those little dots also left an imprint in the back plate adding another uh, layer of interest to my print. So when that's done, I'm lifting up all the plants. And this part can be done as slowly as possible because I need the black paint to dry. This will make lifting it later easier. Do you see the beautiful and very, very detailed prints starting to emerge? Oh. It's so exciting! And it looks beautiful already. And the plants, of course, can be used again and again.
To make every little detail visible, I'm using a contrasting paint. Not exactly white, but I'm going for pink and yellowy gold color this time. But this time you see that I put only a couple of dollops of paint on my gel plate because this layer I want to be really really thin which means that the both layers, the bright layer and the black layer will merge and it will be easy to lift all of it off, not just the top pink layer so I'm pressing down the paper and I will be pulling my prints using it's almost an ordinary printer paper but it is a little bit heavier and I'm just using a kitchen towel on top because I <laughs> cut my paper a little bit smaller than my plate and let's have a sneak peek, did it work? <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> see? Everything is coming off and this is our print and I don't know if you get as excited as I do, as I do but see how beautiful it is stunning, stunning if I can say so myself of course the beauty of this print comes from the nature, it is not something that I did. It of course can be used as it is, it's stunning and beautiful. But I will continue working on my prints later, but for now of course I need to make more prints. You can never make only one gel print. So I'm experimenting with colors and different placement of plants to make many many prints. And I will show you all the prints in our Facebook group. You can find the links to the... Look at this. Isn't it stunning? You can find the, find the links to the group in the description of this video. But if you just go to the Facebook and search for Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe Group, this is where you get all the conversations and pictures and everything. So you are very welcome to join us there. So to add more interest, I will be coloring the prints. And I'm using my new favorite toy, which is Posca colored pencils. The coloring, I'm trying to keep it very gentle. The pencils allow me to keep the details of the print underneath. And I'm trying to go quite lightly on top of the print with the pencil. And as you see, I chose a realistic uh, light green color, which I didn't like because I don't want to have a very realistic nature print. So I'm going over these uh, purple color and other colors, which are not exactly like the ones that you see on these leaves in nature. While coloring, I kept reminding myself that Dita, these are background papers. This is not a finished art piece. So try to keep them very subtle and not too bright. And of course using pencils helps. If I would use alcohol markers, they would inevitably become much brighter. As you saw, I made quite a few prints. I will not color all of them, maybe three or four. Just keeping this project uh, in mind. But the rest of them I will just keep as a background papers for future projects. I am not coloring every little detail, every little leaf or flower just to add more interest and I am going around the colored plants with a white acrylic paint because the acrylic paint is I guess the only thing that would write easily on colored pencil so these are background papers. I will not be adding um, any texture paste or I will not be gluing anything on uh, top right now. I want to keep them plat flat because probably they even will need to go through the die cutting machine. But I want to add some detail. So I add in some stamping with a permanent ink. And then I chose a darker but grey, not black ink to add even more details with my very favorite stencil. A lot of work to create just a background paper, I hear you say. Of course, you are right. But this was so enjoyable. You could make these papers using stamps maybe, or just drawing the plants freehand, of course. But this was so enjoyable. 
This was a classic case of doing it for the process and not only for the end result. Gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> I hope this inspires you to create something and if you would like to share what you've created, do join our Facebook group or use hashtag Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe on Instagram. And I see you in the next episode.